Professor P.P. Higgins here. Actually, I'm uh, Michael Briquette, father of uh, Matt Briquette, who's right now operating this camera. Do you really want to admit that on camera, though? Uh, okay. the father of... Well, uh, for the people who are watching it, it it's fine. Publicly, I, I won't admit it. There are people that hate my guts that watch this vlog. Oh, well, then, in that case, I'm really not his father. <laughs> I've never met the man before in my life. <laughs> big fan of, uh, 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 well, actually of all movies. Uh, I went to the movies as often as I could. Even all throughout school, I would skip school and <laughs> go to the movies, spend my lunch money. Uh, and I even saw the, the original Americanized Godzilla starring Raymond Burr in, in movie theaters. The first one that I really loved, felt absolutely fell in love with and just had a great time with, was Destroy All Monsters. And during the 60s, there was a really popular trend of doing these movies with all-star casts. And when I when I say all-star casts, I mean I don't mean like the top five or six people. I mean like forty huge stars in, right. in one motion picture, like the greatest story ever told. You know, there'd, there'd be a centurion on screen for a minute and a half, played by John Wayne. Destroy All Monsters was like the uh, uh, the Toho version of. You know, yeah. of those movies, you know, yeah. with uh, all the monsters, you know, all of them, you know, the, the good ones and the bad ones. And some of them, frankly, uh, you know, I, I wasn't thrilled with, like uh, uh, Godzilla versus The Thing. You know, I knew, I remember this, I knew before buying my ticket to the Godzilla versus The Thing, I knew, well, The Thing is going to be a loser of a monster, because uh, that's why they're, that's why they're not telling us what it is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, you know, and it's Mothra. Mothra, I never thought was very exciting. You know, a giant moth. Ooh. <laughs> New York City is full of my soul. New York City, everyone should go. New York City. You know, and that makes sense because I can remember that the the Godzilla movies following that. I mean, they, they there was a sharp downhill turn yeah. and. Yeah, because Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster was in the early 70s, because I, I remember I moved to San Francisco, and, and they, the, the movies were still coming out, but they did get progressively, progressively worse. Yes. And, and I definitely would say that, for, uh, certainly for me, the peak was uh, Destroy All Monsters. But I remember it very vividly, because it was just, the colors were so bright, and uh, um, and the music was really, was just perfect, just, just really nice. Uh, uh, the battles were fun, and it was fun seeing all those monsters together. And my favorite, uh, and I can't remember if this was if, if this monster became my favorite in Destroy All Monsters or in his, his uh, original starring role. Uh, but he's always remained my favorite since then. Uh, Ghidra, the three-headed monster. Which what, what what's what is he known as now? Ghidorah. Well, Ghidorah, because they just they took the O out. Right, but back then Ghidra. he was he was Ghidra. He will always be Ghidra to me. <laughs> <laughs> and and I thought back then, you know, long before CGI and uh, digital animation and stuff like this, the fact that you could have uh, even a, a, a three-headed rubber-suited guy was was pretty incredible. Yeah, and I really remember walking out of that movie feeling like I, I had really been entertained by a movie, you know, <laughs> that this this really was entertaining. Yeah. I, th I think I'd like to watch it with the original AIP dub, yeah. just because that's the one that I saw at the Del Mar Theater in Santa Cruz, California, and no doubt in May 1969, because I used to go see these movies on the day they opened, it was very important to me. <laughs> I'm excited to see Ghidra again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a little strange. Yeah, but okay. You're, 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 I haven't seen Ghidra in a long time. Oh, you're Giddy for Ghidra. It's okay. Yeah, Giddy for Ghidra. It's all right. That's me, Giddy for Ghidra. <laughs> well, I forgot. <laughs> Ghidra, the three headed monster, dies. <laughs> He came back two movies later. Oh, that's right. Or maybe not two movies, but two. So maybe he movies. was just badly injured. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you feel, can never keep a good monster down. You know? I, I feel better. I feel better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was that was a whole lot of fun watching that. And the, the things that, that I liked the most, that I remember liking the most about it, all these decades, it was it was uh, 44 years ago that I saw that in the movie theaters. Was uh, the color, and I really remembered how how. How bright the color is, and there's just an incredible color palette in this uh, uh, in this movie, and and it was it was perfect watching this restoration because it was a flawless restoration print. Yeah, I can really see why I rem why I remember the colors in that movie because movies didn't look like that back yeah. then generally, you know, as a rule. They're bright, 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 uh, heavily saturated primary colors th uh, throughout the movie. And it's just beautiful to look at, and, and that score is is terrific. One of the disadvantages of watching it now is is uh, uh, back in the uh, '60s and the and the '50s, dub movies were very very commonplace. We were really used to them, you know. Well, I, I've hardly seen any of them in the last 40 years. I've I've always preferred subtitled movies. Right. But the one dub movie that I have seen many times over the last 40 years is What's Up Tiger Lily, which is a disadvantage now. <laughs> which was also dubbed by AIP. Which was also released and dubbed by AIP, exactly. And so that was uh, uh, Woody Allen's spoof of spy movies. And so when some of these characters say things that uh, maybe not the most intelligent dialogue, it sounds like maybe Woody Allen might have been involved in, in this right. movie too. Uh, there's there's one line that I remember after seeing seeing it. I remember quoting it to people, and that is, uh, uh, and now a special report: Godzilla is invading New York. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> this restoration is uh, is absolutely pristine. I recently watched the restoration of Bridge of the River Kwai. That was not pristine. It was uh, it, really yeah. It 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 it, uh, it, it did not. Look nearly as sharp and as clear as this one. I'm very, very impressed with that. We were talking about how great it would be to see a print this pristine projected on the big screen, and, and that reminded me that the theater that I saw it in, as I mentioned, was the Del Mar Theater in Santa Cruz, California. This was back in the age when you still had huge single screen movie theaters, you know, which is something that people don't even know about. And the, the theaters themselves. Uh, were part of the movie watching experience. Right. You know, just being in this in this movie palace, this beautifully decorated, uh, ornate movie palace, was part of the was part of the whole experience. And so it would be wonderful to, to see this movie again on a big screen in a theater like that. But that was part of my original experience, and that was you know uh, seeing all those colors on a screen that probably at least four times larger than, than the average uh, Cineplex movie screen nowadays. The rubber suits don't look quite as impressive <laughs> as, as they did 44 years ago. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's still a very entertaining and, and fun movie. But let me ask you something. Uh, Son of Godzilla never really worked. I mean, are you talking about just Minya in general? Min Minya in general, yes. I think from a certain standpoint, they, they had to bring him in because I, I think that it kind of humanized Godzilla, and I think that that was a turn the character kind of needed. But it was also a sign of the times. And I, I think it is, you know, you've got all these big scary monsters, and then, and then Son of Godzilla, you know. Uh, but I was just reminded of that because I'd forgotten that uh, uh, that he was uh, that he was in this. And frankly. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Ghidra wasn't as impressive as I remembered him, <laughs> <laughs> but I still I still love Ghidra. Right. <laughs> and one thing that we were talking about while watching it, having to do with the colors, is this movie really did have a production design. Yeah, it, did. it, it was not it was not slapped together. Um, it, they really put some thought into the uh, into the colors and the backgrounds, and it's just it's it's always a pleasure to watch. You know, everything is sort of. Uh, Evenly, it looks evenly fake, which creates its own reality. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. As, a, as opposed to movies where the uh, uh, the foreground looks real and the background looks fake. Yeah. And uh, in in this movie, because everything is, is fake, it like it creates its own reality. And, and I love the ending. Cause it ended like every movie and every TV show ended in the 1960s, with either the hero or the villain, uh, the camera pulling back, and them stand, standing there. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>